Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You caught me right in the middle of deciding whether I should chuck this tool into a garbage or give it a proverbial last chance. So, you know what? Let's find out together. So what I have here is a dowling jointer made by Triton. And uh, what dowling jointer is, it's a basically a drill which is uh, for drilling two holes perfectly spaced against each other and then filling the holes with dowels like this and then sticking the two pieces of wood together like this. So it's a basically a loose tenon, loose tenon joinery and you can join the two pieces of wood from the edge or a perpendicular like this. So it's uh, mostly used in cabinet making, especially in Central Europe where a lot of furniture is uh, laminated particle board, something like this. This is unlaminated, uh, but uh, this is one of the ways how to do this. Uh, there is a stationary type of this device where you don't have only two of these uh, drill bits but you have like 20 of these and you can chuck the whole board inside of the machine and then drill all the holes together. And this handheld type of uh, machine is for uh, quick joinery and somebody who doesn't have uh, space or the means or, or the usage for such a big stationary machine. I started this video about the quality of this tool and whether I should check this into a garbage can because uh, this, despite the price of this device, it's uh, something around 200, 250 uh, 50 dollars. This isn't very, uh, very precise tool and uh, the precision is really what you need for this type of connection. Because the way how it operates, let me show you, the way how it operates is that I have two pieces of wood like this. I will line up for, for a butt joint so I feel the edges, whether they are perfectly flat and then I just scribe a line across the connection and this is where I want the center line of the two holes, something like here. Then I will take the, uh, take the tool, lower down the, uh, this fence, this is for cutting into the edge, and then I line up this center line here and do, do the drilling. And I will do this on the same, uh, I will do this on the, uh, the same on the other part, end up with two holes and connect the woods like this. Uh, this is not a very well thought out uh, tool. There is, there are missing, uh, uh, missing gauges, missing markings. So it's very hard to use this tool. Apart from the design mistakes, there are a manufacturing mistakes because this is a very poorly uh, manufactured piece of machinery. All of these parts are, uh, are cast aluminium, so you can see the markings of, uh, of the injection molding process. And uh, this uh, process is not very precise. There will be some sort of a material oozing out of, uh, out of the injection molding. There will be some imprecisions. Uh, the metal won't reach all the crevices inside of the, of the molding if the molding is badly, uh, badly, uh, uh, badly made. So on some surfaces, on the, the ones that are uh, for, uh, for measuring and for positioning the device, you have to do a further machining. And uh, the Triton decided to machine only this face. This is machined, so this is flat. There are uh, markings of some fly cutter. So this has been ran, uh, ran through a milling process, but it's not on this, uh, this edge. So these two edges don't line up perfectly. 
there is a slight gap, there is a slight angle. So when you do, when you are drilling in this position, it has a tendency to weeble wobble. So that's uh, that's like one of the major problems of this tool. And the the most problematic part is uh, in the connection of the of the sliding motor against this base. They are using a, a dovetail, uh, dovetail type of joint uh, hidden in here, but it has a very large tolerance. So if you can hear, okay, and somebody cut my electricity, I guess. Oh my God. Let's continue later, shall we? All right, so electricity is back. Let's continue. But uh, where was I? Oh yeah, I was complaining about the uh, uh, the dovetail mechanism. Okay, so you can hear that there is a lot of movement uh, between the drilling part and the base part. So. That is quite a problem because if you drill the holes slightly off, not perpendicular, you are going to end up with connection which is like this, if I exaggerate it. So this is a crucial part of uh, the tool precision and it is quite off. So as I'm talking about this tool, I'm slightly moving towards the chucking into the garbage uh, solution. But uh, I think if I will give it uh, enough uh, patience when I will be working with this, I think this can be still uh, uh, overcome or fixed or something like this. Uh, the problem is, or the objection of this, uh, of this solution is that you don't drill only one set of holes, but you drill as many holes as you can throughout the all edge of the workpiece. So this is 32 millimeters apart, which is like a, a woodworking standard in uh, Europe. And if you have 640 millimeters, there is, you can fit like 220 or more like 19, uh, 19 of these packs. That means there will be a lot of uh, connection, or, or a lot of strength holding these uh, two pieces of wood together. But that means that you are not striking only one line like this, but you need to strike many of them, like 10 in a row and perfectly spaced and everything. There is a version of this tool by another manufacturer. Uh, it's uh, by Muffle and they are adding uh, accessory uh, rail guides so you can uh, perfectly index and position all of the this set of cuts on both of the work pieces. And that's, uh, that's something I would like to try to make today and uh, just learn if it will make this tool more pleasant to use and also more uh, more precise. And this is the thing I came up with. The main rail has perforations on uh, both sides and those register against this part which uh, will be 3D printed and mounted on the tool itself. And it will allow to move the tool along the rail in steps of 64 millimeters. And the rail has a fixed edge and a moving edge. And with this little knob I will be able to tighten the uh, moving edge against, uh, against the rail. These cutouts, which there is four of them, are for uh, alignment of the jig against the workpiece and also allow uh, to position the device or the, uh, or the tool uh, as far on the edge as possible. And all of that will be made out of 8mm plywood. So you just saw what I'm about to do, what I'm about to make, but I won't be able to do it here because even if I would have a jigsaw, which I destroyed in a, in the past, I wouldn't be able to achieve this type of type of precision. So you know what? 
Let's take a trip, shall we? Uh, so I'm heading to a local maker space in Brno and uh, it's called Fabla and they have a lot of machines you can play with and one of the machines is laser cutter slash engraver so it's a machine with a laser which can go in XY position and it can cut and engrave uh, different sets of materials like uh, wood, some plastic, even a glass and aluminium and uh, since I need the rail to be very precise uh, I think this is the perfect tool uh, to manufacture something like this. The difference between cutting and engraving is basically in the uh, intensity of the laser and the speed the laser is uh, by which the laser is moving uh, above the object. So the difference between cutting and engraving is uh, is very subtle. It's uh, it's something that you need to find because it depends. Uh, on the particular uh, material and the thickness of the material. So if you want to engrave in, uh, in plastic, it's easier than engraving in aluminium. That means uh, for aluminium you have to have a, a stronger intensity of the laser and you have to move slower. But for cutting plastic you can, uh, uh, you can have lower intensity and you can move faster. I'm still shy to speak to camera in public places, so voiceover has to be enough. In FabLab I exported the CAD model into SVG and fixed the line thicknesses and colors in Inkscape so the laser cutter will understand it. Then I had to focus the laser and it is done by hanging this calibration tool on the edge of the laser head and slowly rising the bed until the tool hits the material and falls off. Then you just hit the play button and see what's going on. The cutting had to be done in two passes by running the same job twice and sometimes the exported lines in the SVG were not continuous so the laser was jumping all over the place. Nothing wrong with that but it prolongs the job time. Then I did a test fit with the tool and had to alter some dimensions, cut it again and it was finally done. And I'm back. So, this is the off cut, this is all the, all the parts which has been cut out, there are some tests, so as I was telling you on my way there, you had to test how, how the laser is cutting and how the laser is engraving and I had a lot of problems with this, this small part, but yeah, I cut everything and now it's time to assemble it. So here are all the parts that has to go together somehow. This is the main rail guide. This is where it gets attached to one of these sides, to these ones. I already cut the holes. This is a four millimeter through hole. This is a two millimeter hole, which is like a pilot hole for, uh, for a screw. This is a knob or three-part knob which will go together like this. Inside I will use this, uh, this bolt. This is a slot uh, or pin which will go in, inside of the slot and all of this will be connected from the bottom side to this piece and again I have some holes here. This one, this bigger hole is for a T-nut, which I had somewhere and now I don't. Well, I will find it later. And uh, the knob will be tightening against the T-nut. So all of this will be slidable, so it can accommodate different widths of, uh, of the work pieces. And these are the uh, the indexed positions. These are 64 millimeters uh, apart, 
so you can uh, do a 32 millimeter set of holes. And this will get registered against this contraption over here. This is a 3D printed part because it has to, has to have this lip which goes instead of this metal thingy here. And it perfectly matches and you can set the position any way you like. Okay, everything is sent smooth. So let's continue with gluing this together. So the idea is very simple. This is like a spacer piece, which will go directly on the wood. Here is the bolt cut to the length. Here is a piece which will make the bolt turn and this gets glued on top. So, where is the glue? Oh, here it is. Come on. It's like a milking competition. Ah. Oh yes. But not here. Anywhere else but there. It's slightly deeper than I would like to, so I will add some washers. So the the screw doesn't rattle inside. And let's move this you know what they say: the thinner the layer of glue is, the stronger is the bond. something to space it. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now to the these two parts. So I have the slot here, or uh, the pin here, and I just have to. Oh, I didn't, I didn't send this. I need to countersink, countersink these because I will be using this countersinking screws excellent excellent okay it would be nice to screw this on the correct side which is this okay I will put a little bit of glue underneath and I will use the screws mostly for uh, as a clamping pressure not a not a holding pressure so 
something like this. I should check the uh, perpendicularity of this because it's a that's a crucial part of this system. Yes, yeah, so I think that's correct. Just tighten this. All right. First thing almost done. I have to add the T nut from the bottom. And here it is. Should I punch it? Oh, this or this? No. Oh, it's okay. Okay. I was thinking about uh, sinking this into some uh, pre-drilled hole, but uh, like using a Forstner bit or something like this. But uh, once you have the center hole already uh, already drilled, it's uh, very hard to to center any any other rotor bit or or drill bit. So. This will not be laying like this, I think, or maybe it will. No, it won't. No, it won't. This is eight millimeter, but I will be using this predominantly with with this uh, eighteen millimeter particle board. So it will be, yeah, it will be like this. It will be in the air, so it won't rock away on me. Okay. So that's another part done. Let's do this big one. And the procedure is the same. I'm going to countersink these holes and screw this onto this. It's a nicely looking knob. That's nice. Okay. And it goes. It goes. <laughs> nice. So there is a little bit of play. This, uh, the pin versus the slot, but once it when it is tightened, once it is tightened, it's that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. All right. Let's replace the indexing comb here Need some washers it's it's a bit of a plastic so this part I designed in CAD and 3d printed it's made out of PLA and I did a four perimeters because the perimeters are what uh, makes the 3d printed part strong 
not the infill. The infill works only in certain situations, but the number of parameters is what it makes really strong. And since I'm tightening this, since I'm tightening this over here, that's where I need the parameters the most because I'm pushing against the oval shape. And the reason why I made this a oval shape is that I can fine tune the position. Because I can model and I can 3D print this part precisely, but you cannot trust the, the concentricity of these two holes against the center of these drill bits. So if it is like one millimeter off, the imprecision will double. So the, the two parts will be two millimeters off. So this is something which I, the position has to be uh, calibrated and that's what I'm going to do now. So I will put some testing mark. I have to use this. And now, since I have Since I have the guide here, I don't have to do any marks, but this mark is for testing uh, about the, uh, the alignment and the concentricity of this. But the goal of this endeavor, this project, is that I don't have to make the marks anymore and the two parts drilled together, joined together, will be joined just like, like this. About these cutouts. These cutouts are for the tool itself because the width of this and especially the distance from the si uh, center of the drill bit and the side is more than 32 millimeters. And I would like to start the first hole the 32 millimeters from the edge whenever possible. So 32, 32, 32 and so on. But if I would do it like this and the fence wouldn't allow me to move past this edge. So that's what this cutout is for and it's for this part of the base. And also I can use this edge as a measurement tool. So I can move it a little bit out clamp it okay line up the edges tighten this and now I should be able to slide this into position like this And that's the further as I can get. So here are the holes. I still could accommodate. No, actually I wouldn't be able to accommodate because the another set of two will end up. Oh, we'll be able to accommodate one more, one more set like here. So this can be improved, this can be cut out a little bit more, so I can move the tool even further. But let's do the other side and see how these holes will line up. And as I mentioned, the goal is to not flip it. That's why I have this mark here. So I cannot flip it like this. And I even cannot flip it like this, because then I would be referencing this edge, but I would be referencing this edge. 
see. So this is my referencing edge. So if I want to cut from this side, I have to do the opposite way, like this and flip it like this. So this is my referencing edge and this is the moving edge. I will try to add all the pegs. It's nice tight fit. There is no weeble wobble in this uh, in the pegs. That's nice. And the moment of truth. So I don't know if you can see, but the holes don't line up or the lines don't line up. It's like one millimeter off. And that means the holes on this part are a little bit to this side and these holes are a little bit to this side. So they are trying to match and that's why the lines are moving this way. So I have to adjust this fence and move it and I'm just thinking this through on the fly. The holes are here so I have to move this to this side and since this is like one millimeter or one and a half millimeter I need to move this uh, on the, the other way exactly half so like 0.75 millimeters. I think this is like more like a experimental type of work, not something exact. Okay, so it cannot be better than this. So the butt joint of these two boards is just, just perfect. So this is perfectly aligned against this. Both of these sides are perfectly aligned because it's a laser cut. And now I will do another test. And the last one is to make the perpendicular cut, which will be a little bit more tricky. So let's line this up where it's supposed to be, like this. Okay, I'm super careful holding this down. So this is a sort of a, a design deficiency of this rail guide. It can move like this, so it's not completely clamped. I think I need to clamp even here to the workpiece. Maybe it will be helpful to have some uh, some rubber beneath this so it has some more grab, grabbing strength but here you can see how how I try to drill 
the same hole twice because I think I didn't go that deep on the first go but it moved on me I didn't notice and it looks like this so this is something I need to address and fix in the future but let's see how how those line up now Okay, that looks nice. So the prototype zero of this accessory is finished and I just like it how it is. It allows me to do a repeatable joinery like this one and I think I won't be chucking this tool into a garbage after all, but I will definitely keep a close eye on him. So it's amazing that uh, a week ago I just got introduced uh, to laser cutting and engraving and after one week I was able to design and use the laser cutter to, uh, to my prototyping. So that's like amazing tool and amazing skill to have uh, under my belt and I will then be definitely using this in some future projects. I like how quickly something can be put together and how precise it can be. Uh, so that's really something amazing to have uh, in a workshop or to have access to for making jigs and something like this. So thank you very much for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe or like. And if you think you're a big fan of this channel, there is a way how to support me even further. And even if not, I hope I will see you next time. Bye. Now I have to find some home for this. Maybe somewhere here. Yeah, I think I'm running out of space here. Never mind.